Hi everybody, it's Randy Hilarski here. We're doing another video today for Crypto Daily UK. Today I'm talking to my friend Luke Stokes. He's my witness on Steam and uh, the guy I vote for. And I want to introduce the community to one of the best guys I think in crypto. Uh, the, the way he stands up for what we do and the non-aggression principle and uh, the freedom of what crypto brings us. So Luke, take it away. Tell us a little bit about what you do with Steam and as my favorite witness. Thank you so much, Randy. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I, I got involved in Steam actually, I think it was uh, June of 2016 when I first joined and I was just super excited about it. I've, I've been in crypto, as you know, since 2013, beginning of 2013 in January. And I, I, I saw in Steam, actually two of my friends told me about it at the same time and they said, hey, this, this Steam at website, you know, the Steam blockchain, this is really like amazing. You're going to love this. You got to get on board. And, and immediately I was like, oh my goodness, this is cryptocurrency that anybody can use. This is a way that anyone can get mass adoption. And, and I just, I, I got really excited about it because with my company, with Boxycart at the time, I was trying to encourage people to accept Bitcoin through their stores. And it was just like, nobody cared. You know, I was in like, thousands of stores and I'm blogging about it. I'm writing, I'm doing videos about it. I'm telling people about it. It was back in 2013, 2014. And, and really just kind of, it, it was too confusing for most people. And so when I saw Steam and I saw Steam, I got really excited about it and I'm still excited about it. Uh, as you said, I'm still a witness there and I, I love the community. I love the potential there. You know, as you and I have both discussed, you know, we've had our differences with the leadership as far as Steam it Incorporated and the Steemit.com website and what they've done with that. But one of the things that I've learned and it's taken a little while and I've tried to educate and help people realize is that the Steam blockchain and the Steam cryptocurrency are absolutely amazing and revolutionary and so much more valuable than just steamit.com and, and you know, we've got things like steam monsters and steam peak and busy.org and all, all these other expressions you know Partico and e-steam surfer and like i mean i could go on and on with all these incredible applications being built on top of this technology and now with steam engine as well so we have even tokens that you can build now yeah. on steam and so many incredible projects and it's it's one of those things that I feel like most people get distracted by Steemit.com and don't realize that, hey, there's some amazing witnesses, amazing projects, amazing, amazing things going on in the Steam blockchain. I, I actually and stopped it, using, I, I actually stopped using Steemit.com and started posting using Busy just because it, um, it, it seemed more refined. And if I'm going to bring new users into this, to Steam, to blog, that just makes more sense. Come on over, use, use Busy. And if you're a mobile user, the app Partico is amazing. I yeah, love yeah. I, I remember uh, back when right that card fork twenty. There was a lot of drama when that first came out. And the, the blockchain was a little rough for a couple of weeks, and things weren't working well. And I got to do an interview with uh, the main Partico guy, and just talking through like how he could help his community. We had this great conversation, and then I was like, wait a minute. We should have just recorded that. So then we just turned on the recorder. We just had the whole conversation again, and it and it used it. He used it as a, a mechanism to talk to his community. He said, "Okay, look, I talked to a witness. He's talking to Steam Incorporated. He's talking to the developers. He knows what's going on. Here's what's going on." And it's uh, yeah, it's 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 also neat to me. I think to see with kind of like the Steam Alliance and the kind of this move away from centralization towards more decentralization. I think anyone who's been in cryptocurrency for any amount of time. This is why they're involved, right? They want decentralized systems. They want better forms of governance that aren't, don't involve threats of violence, that don't involve, you know, central bankers and, and violent governments and all these things. And it's been neat to see the things I've been doing with EOS and EOS DAC, kind of exploring these de decentralized governance things, how it's kind of some of that experience is now coming over into how Steam is kind of reinventing itself and thinking about, yeah, maybe being reliant on one centralized company to do the development with Steam Incorporated, you know, they had to lay off 70 people recently right. and things like that. It's like, maybe that's not the best approach. And, and so it's been exciting to see people that originally were like, wait, how can you be involved with something on you and still be involved on Steam? And now they're kind of like, hey, uh, hey, uh, what'd you learn over there? Can you teach us some of that stuff? And, <laughs> and I just, from day one, I've, I've always just not been a maximalist. I, I, I do really like delegated proof of stake because what I've, I watched and learned firsthand with proof of work and that whole block size debate and you know seeing Bitcoin just kind of be hindered technologically because they couldn't have any on-chain governance to figure out what the community was going to do. But, uh, you know, so I've, I've always involved in lots of different projects and you know, smart cash or this, that, and the other. I mean, so many things, bit shares that I, I get super excited about. And, and it helps me learn. It helps me be a, a better resource to others to help them as well. Yeah, I feel the same way. Uh, just not put all of my eggs in one basket, as they say, right? I, I believe that there's every blockchain has, not everyone is going to succeed, but each is trying to come up with a certain segment of the blockchain space. And I think Steam's doing very well with the social media side and gaming. And um, maybe EOS will have 
you know, a lot of redundancy there and be similar type of projects, but their government's, governance model maybe will open up a ton more opportunities. Uh, and that's what EO stack is bringing us. Uh, that's why I, that's why I understand it. EO stack, the decentralized autonomous, Decentralized autonomous. Decentralized autonomous community, company, corporation, uh, also DAO is a common term, decentralized autonomous organization. We've taken on the C to mean community because as we think about value, it's like it's the network effect of a bunch of different people believing that they're creating value, which is is what actually creates value. You know, we have these pieces of paper with dead people on them and, and you know, we call it money and it has value because we all believe it has value. It's really that network effect of a whole bunch of people coming together that creates value. And I think that when we talk about uh, building something in a way that's decentralized, and by that we mean no single point of failure, by uh, autonomous we mean running on smart contracts on an immutable blockchain that is transparent and trustworthy and is open source, you can verify the code, the inputs you give it give you consistent outputs, there's no like, you know, craziness that can go on where they could just change the rules out from under you. It's pretty consistent. And then as far as the community part, that that's where I think the real power of the DAC is. And you can get a bunch of people together that have a shared goal, but importantly are still individuals. And I think that's really important for like the voluntarist anarchist kind of community, which, you know, has in the cypherpunk roots of the blockchain community, realizing the importance of that individuality, that ability to not be part of, you know, some, molass collective that eventually destroys rights you know if left if left unchecked and I, I, what i like about the dac model is it creates an opportunity for individuals to remain sovereign and individual but then based on their skin in the game their token holdings their their their, their token weighted vote they then elect custodians who have to make decisions for a group of people with the shared goals and i think that that is kind of this new model that i'm hoping more individualist minded people can become open to because they recognize as individuals we can't get much done but as a group of people, as a, and we are a social species, we love to work together and connect. As a group, we can get a lot done. In order to do that, we have to actually organize ourselves and really govern ourselves. And it's, some people don't like that word governance. Right. They're, too, you know, they're, they're thinking about government, which uses violence and force, whereas we just have these voluntary contractual agreements to say, hey, you know, Randy, you're going to do this work. You submit it as a worker proposal. The elected custodians come in and say, you know, let's evaluate all these worker proposals. And we say, yeah, you know, that's super valuable for our community to achieve our shared goals. Let's go ahead and approve that and make sure it gets paid. And then you actually then have the funds from the DAC automatically transfer into an escrow account. So if that, if that board of custodians, you know, gets voted out and a new board gets voted in and you put a month of work into something and they go, ah, I wouldn't like Randy and we're, we're not going to pay him, you know, and then it, well, that can't happen because the funds are locked in that escrow account. And there's no even permissions on that escrow account. So they couldn't modify that contract if they wanted to. And in that process, when you submit your worker proposal, there's an arbitrator who can actually go in and say, hey, you know, Randy's a great guy, he did the work, yeah. go ahead and pay. You know? And the vice versa, if somebody's trying to you know, scam the DAC, there's a way that that can be prevented because, hey, this guy said he was going to do the work, he's trying to claim it, but he didn't do anything. That I think it's, uh, I th I, I, when I understood the DAC originally, I, I, I thought you guys were just launching a coin for your own business, right? Um, and I, I was totally incorrect. You guys have a project that's letting other people come in, start their own projects on EOS back and have their own, uh, does that look like, like an exchange? Um, that's done the, well, the, the way to, the way to think about it would be, we are not only a community on block producer on EOS, but we're also a DAC enabler. So everything that we build is open source. So everything that we're focusing on is building and, and, and we're kind of using the tools ourselves as we build them. So we're building these tools to make it really easy to come in and say, and my hope is in the future, you're not going to have people come in and say, oh, you know, I'm bragging with all my Silicon Valley buddies and I'm going to start some new startup company, an IPO or ICO or whatever. Instead, I'm going to be like, I'm going to build a community. I'm going to get a bunch of people together who all have maybe time, skills, effort, but maybe they don't have any money. Maybe they don't have any connections, whatever. Get them together, get their shared goals aligned and say, okay, here's our constitution. Here's our voluntary agreement that we're going to align ourselves to and then move forward and build the DAC. And that creates so many incredible opportunities for places that, that really have no other option. Their government is corrupt. Their currency is broken. They don't have any uh, practical resources to coordinate together. And now, you know, anybody with a cell phone can just come and sign up to the DAC, you know, participate with the process. And it's, it's our hope is that with the DAC factory in the future, it's going to be as simple as just click, click, click. You know, right now it's about a, you run about a 15 minute script that I put together that kind of asks you a bunch of questions. You can configure your own DAC, put in your own logo, you know, set up all your accounts and stuff. 
And the first time I ran that, it took me like the entire day, just running through all the different pieces of code we had. And then I was like, okay, I got that to work. Let me see if I can do it again. So I did it again and I, I videotaped it. It took about an hour and a half. You know? I'm like, okay, it's still pretty tedious. So, so we got the script down to like just 15 minutes as opposed to just, you know, an hour and a half or a day. And it, 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 it's, it works. It, it, it's just, you know, it's a little technical and complicated still. And the goal is in the future to make it super simple, a really nice interface that you can just go in there and you set up your parameters. What do you, how do you want to name the deck? How many custodians do you want to have? What kind of parameters do you want to have? And I, I'm really, really excited about it. I do think that the DAC technology is the future. It's going to eliminate all these kind of points of corruption, single points of failure, and create opportunity in places that don't have it. And it really, the more and more I talk to people about it, the more they get the idea, they're like, wait a minute, as an entrepreneur, I could just like start something and not have to completely own it myself. Like I could actually bring other people in and tokenize and incentivize them to participate. And it's really this mindset of, instead of having to own everything and, and with the ego and be like, hey, this is my thing and I'm, I'm the guy, I'm the man, instead of being like, no, this is our thing. Like, nobody owns it, it just lives as smart contracts. And if, as long as people are excited about it, it continues on. I had this thought actually just uh, today or yesterday, a friend of mine was asking me whatever happened to the, um, the I think it was called Zapple, the, the Twitter clone that was on Steam. And someone was like, what happened to that? That was a cool project, where'd it go? And I was like, if it was a DAC, we'd know. But because it's not, you know, I, and I don't, I, maybe you do, I don't know the story behind what happened there, you know, the, the, it's just gone. And, and it, it, whether the founder gives up and leaves, whether they run out of runway and don't have enough money, whether the, the development team splits off and does something else, these are all things that cause single points of failure. But if you have a DAC running as a smart contract and uh, you have a, an interface and a token where anyone who obtains that token now has governance rights to decide who makes the decisions and can modify the smart contracts or whatever it might be, yeah you eliminate these challenges. And so like, it's almost like an organism. As long as we keep feeding it with human energy, it'll keep living and, and evolving and growing. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, I mean, speaking of the steam dApps, there's been so many to come and go. Yeah. <laughs> and again, if they were built as, you know, open decentralized, open source decentralized autonomous communities, I, I think that they'd have a much better you know, chance of survival. And also too, the people who maybe get burned out, like we've had people that come and participate in the DAC for a while and do what they want to do and then move on to other things. And it's, it's that there's that expectation of complete voluntary interactions that is really powerful because you kind of have to be super nice to people because you're like, oh man, if we don't treat him well, like he's kind of really important. Like if he leaves, then like, oh man, that's going to be a lot of work for us to have to figure out to find someone else. And at the same time, it's super open for anyone to jump in. So like there, uh, someone, Lucas came in and he, uh, I just randomly found him, like we decided, okay, we're gonna use Jekyll. It's a static website generation for our new website, eostack.io, really beautiful website. And, and I was like, okay, well, I could figure this out, but I'm not a Jekyll expert. I'd rather have like an expert set it up. Somebody who really knows what they're doing. So I go to the forums at Jekyll and I say, hey, here's what we're doing with the DAC. And he just finds us, joins our community, does this amazing job and is now like this awesome, passionate member. And he's like, and he's like, yeah, I've worked on open source stuff before, but I never got paid. And wow, this is so cool. I'm getting crypto. <laughs> And he's this amazing member of our community now. And like, I see that happening over and over again in the future as more and more people realize that they can, like, let's say you want to spend six months and work on something. Well, that's cool. You get paid and then you're going to stop and go do something else. And just that freedom, especially with, you know, you and I both with families, like that freedom to be able to jump into work and jump out of work. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the first year of Max's life, I, I actually didn't have my own project. I didn't have anything I was actually working on on my own. And, now I'm back on the Crypto Daily UK, and that's given me like uh, something to wake up in the morning to work on, to give me an excuse to go out and build content and talk about things like EOS DAC. And, uh, before, yeah, I would do it. I, I would write about it, but my passion wasn't as strong because, um, as you know, 2017 was a fabulous year for everybody. 2018, uh, a lot of us, uh, our money <laughs> went down substantially. Uh, oh, yeah. it, was, it was kind of a depressing year for a lot of us. Uh, and then 2019, where I, I could feel the energy coming back to our whole sphere. And it feels like we're building a nice foundation. And uh, now I see EOS is going strong, especially over in Asian communities. And I, I, I think that thanks to projects like EOS, who have such good branding and going out there and uh, trying to bring in mass adoption, I think that the, the end of 2019 is going to be super exciting. Uh, and obviously, hopefully, I see you in Steam Fest, Steam Fest Four. It's be our fourth. Yeah. <laughs> wow, 
do you, do you have any hints about where it might be at this point? Yeah, any, any I'm kind of hoping it gets Madrid or Barcelona. I, I, would really, I would like it to be in Spain because it would be an easy jump for us from Panama. Well, you know, I'm pushing for Puerto Rico, but I don't think that's going to happen. <laughs> well, I, I think, uh, well, Steam Fest is generally uh, very Eurocentric. Mm-hmm. So it, it makes sense that they would stick, stay over there. I actually, Anna would like to see Rome. Uh, we've been mm-hmm. there. We love it. Uh, that wouldn't be a bad place to do it. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm telling you, 2019, I, I can, I'm getting reinvigorated. The energy is coming back. Nice. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very, very excited as well. And it's, it's, I, I keep thinking like this may be the year of the DAC. You know, as more and more people see this idea. And I just, I had a great conversation with someone recently who's worked with Colony and Aragon, like all the other projects on Ethereum and other, other DAC enablers that have been working on this stuff for quite some time and trying to figure out, you know, great, we have all these projects and all these cool things going on, but how do we manage the governance of it? Like, for example, this is a, a big challenge on EOS is that most people don't realize that when they get an EOS based token, or they interact with a game, there's generally usually one private key that manages all of that. So you can imagine, let's say a token goes to millions and billions of dollars in value and you go look at the token contract and it's one private key. That private key has full control of that token. They can mint a billion more, they can transfer all your tokens out from your account and put them in their own account. They could do whatever they want by modifying that contract. And I think some people aren't aware of that. They're not used to that. In, in Ethereum, you know, you set up a contract and it's immutable, you can never touch it. But it, as you know, software is continually evolving, continually changing. And this is why we have like the DAO hack where there's a bug, but you can't fix it. So you lose a hundred and something million dollars. So it, it's a good improvement. But I, I, think, I invested in it. <laughs> oh, yeah. but I, I broke even. I got my money back. So. Oh, nice. <laughs> with, the, with the Ethereum classic kickback, you got you made whole, right? But it's, you know, for me, it's kind of like we, we need to, we need to figure out how are we going to protect those systems, you know? And, and I think that the only way that makes sense is multi-signature. Okay, great. So now you have multi-signature, but then how do you protect the, you know, who, who gets to be on the multi sig You know, how do you have a trusted mechanism? And, and one option like with Shintai, which is a, a leasing system on EOS, you set it to the block producers. So a whole bunch of trusted block producers are on that multi-sig. And that works for a time, but ultimately, you know, the block producers aren't going to be passionately excited about every little project that comes along. So this right. idea that we could build that, as a DAC, and then you have these token elected trusted people within that specific community that are interested in that, um, that can work out really well. And, and I, 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 I hope more and more people will realize the value of this and, and actually start thinking about, yeah, we, we kind of do need a DAC in order to protect via multi-sig our actual system. Another part too that's really neat in our, in our contracts and our permissions level on EOS is that if you're gonna transfer, if the, if the code is actually gonna transfer money from one account to another, it needs a threshold of two. So unless the, there's a multi-sig of the, of the custodians, then they could just transfer it out. But if the code itself is gonna send money, and this is again how we kind of prevent the, the DAO hack uh, in our system, is that you need, one would be, a, a, you get a, a point of one, so you need two to actually make the code work. One is that it come from EOS IO code, a permission, and two is a 60 minute delay. And that's actually built into the fundamental permissions of the actual account itself involved. So essentially, you have to put a deferred transaction 60 minutes in the future and the code has to do that. And then what we also have is like a, a guardian bot that can be watching these accounts and say, oh, okay, I see this deferred transaction that's trying to drain all the money of the DAC, like if there was some bug in the code. Well, right. we clearly not want that and we could easily go and disable that transaction before it executed. So these are like the different things that we've built in. Michael Yates and the team is in Dallas and they've done a, a fantastic job of thinking through how we can use these powerful permissions on EOS to make things so much better than we've had in any other cryptocurrency so far. So it's, it's, it's really exciting because once you kind of prevent crime from being possible, then you can put so much more energy into innovation and building new things as opposed to like trying to deal with catching the bad guys. Absolutely. And we do it every day. I mean, uh, crypto, as we know, is still, it's still not super easy. You know, we're, we're still learning how to make it easy. And uh, anything that we can do to make it better and safer. I, I, I think on that easy part, I, I, we haven't even talked much about this, but uh, as you may know, I'm, I'm going to be the CTO for DAPEX, which is the FIO Foundation. And they're working on the FIO protocol, which already has Edge Wallet and Binance's Trust Wallet and uh, Bread Wallet, Konomi, you know, a whole bunch of really awesome wow. uh, partners are already on board. And they're basically making it so any address on any blockchain would just be a simple uh, just like Steam and EOS, basically. So I could have like, you know, Luke.Stokes and that would be my entire crypto address. 
and I could, you could send any crypto you want and it would come in my wallet as a request. And you could I could say, oh yeah, okay, yeah, here's that request from Randy for lunch or whatever. Cool, yeah, that's cool. And you approve it. So it's a request-based model. It makes things super simple, kind of eliminates the man in the middle attack when you're trying to like get some of these crypto address and you don't know if it's really theirs or not. And anyway, I'm, I'm pretty excited about their, they're currently doing their raise. They're, they're doing their series A raise right now. And kind of, I'm kind of on retainer helping them out it's going into their daily standups and stuff. But uh, once they finish the raise, I'll be on part-time as their CTO. And uh, yeah, check it out. It's Fio.Foundation. They've got a cool little video they just put up this week, a little animated video kind of explaining how it works. Yeah, but I'm excited that, about projects actually, like the, that. Give me the link and I'll actually put that in there because it's, it's pretty interesting. That sounds like- Yeah, it's cool. really exciting. I mean, everyone who's got on board has just been like, oh my gosh, this is the future. And this is why I got on board. You know, I didn't, I don't want another job. I sold my business <laughs> in 2018, you know. Yeah, I was like, like I, don't, I don't want another job. But then I, I saw the project and I was like, wait, you're going to let me work part-time remotely and this is going to change the entire cryptocurrency industry and wallets, exchanges, and payment gateways, they're all going to get on board? I'm like, okay, all right, I might need to be involved in this. And so far, I've had a great time. The team is amazing. It's, uh, it's, it's been fantastic. I tell you what, Luke, I mean, you're like me. I, I do not take a salary. I refuse it. I, I, like to, I like to get my skin in the game and get my rewards elsewhere. I, I you know that's, I'm not a... I'm not one of those people. You don't give me a salary. But people are like, ah, <laughs> here's here's five grand a month to, to help us out. No, I don't want that. No. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's been an interesting, you know, again, I actually just turned down a I got an offer for another CTO offer uh, just last week and I turned it down. And and I, I it's great to know that I, people value what I'm doing, but um but yeah, I'm, I'm right that same way. And it was funny, just it was, I actually flew out to Denver to talk with them and hang out with them and stuff before I made the decision. And it was kind of like one of those things where I'm like, this is going to be so significant that I'm, and it's also not like a super long term commitment. Like the way they're looking to build this thing, the entire thing is open source. It's going to be run by the FIO Foundation. It's, a, it's actually a fork of the EOSIO code. So it's, it's, it's got that same kind of governance model where the actual wallets and, and uh, you know, exchanges will be block producers and they'll be incentivized to provide a great service to their customers to get those votes, to be, you know, be those blockchain validators. And, and it's just a, such a neat project. I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm going to give it a shot because, you know, once the mainnet launches and once we get up and running, the idea is eventually the FIO Foundation will run it and then it'll be kind of, you know, whoever, DAPEX will kind of become less and less important. And this is something that I really wish Steam had done, like, right? They talked a lot about it, but it was never part of, you know, that plan. And, and I, it's funny, I, I have some concerns about Block One as well. I mean, they got so much money, which is fantastic. So it's not like they're going to run out of money and they're so far doing a great job. But it is that concern of like, do we want to make that same mistake again, of relying on a central organization for all development and decision making and stuff. So, so far they're doing fantastic, but I just, I, I like that we're kind of evolving the space and learning from those experiences. I, I love it. All right, Luke. So uh, we were at about 30 minutes here. Um, you know, please give me the links that you think are important for people to check out the EO stack, the, this the Theo foundation, all, all these. And I want people to reach out to you and also give us your Twitter, your Twitter handle. Cause, um, Twitter or crypto Twitter is so important today. That's where everyone yeah. goes for their gossip <laughs> and what's hot. So uh, go ahead and give us a little bit of where, where we can find you and how we can contact you. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm Luke Stokes on Twitter. Uh, I'm Luke Stokes on Steam. I, I pretty much have the same identity everywhere. I really believe that uh, radical transparency is, a, is an important part of how we build reputation and identity as, as, as well as encryption and privacy. I don't know if those both of the, sides of that dichotomy are needed. But yeah, that's generally the best way to get a hold of me. I actually just over the last couple of days, uh, I've been working on lukestokes.info. It was a blog website that I had a long time ago that I really didn't do much with. It really, I started using Steam for two and a half years, so I just abandoned it. But I'm, I'm kind of converting that into more of like an information website to find out more about what I'm doing, uh, to book me for consulting, to book me for speaking engagements, things like that. I've, I've been doing a lot of that for free and I, I love it and enjoy it, but I realize, you know, I, sometimes people, people feel bad about my taking my time and they're like, oh, this was so valuable to me. This is, so, and I'm hearing that over and over going, going, maybe I should make people feel less bad by saying, well, you could pay me if you like, you know, and they're like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, so, so I'm, I'm going to just make that easier. Uh, so yeah, leaksucks.info and, and again, theo.foundation and also uh, eostack.io. I'll send you all those links. Uh, I okay. definitely love to help anyone who is looking for, you know, more education information about the cryptocurrency space from multiple angles, not just proof of work, not just delegate proof of stake, and also just kind of where the, the future is going with governance with DAX and things like that. 
it's exciting times. Well, I, you know, as, as far as me being the brand ambassador for Crypto Daily, whatever you have out there, like if you put together content that's educational, I can get it put on the website and um, that'd be great to help. Very cool. Very cool. All right. Thank you. Thanks so much thanks. for having me. Where are, you, it. where are you coming to? Where are you from? Right? Where are you at? I'm in Puerto Rico, in Caguas, Puerto Rico. I we moved here in December with my family, my three kids, my wife, and it's been absolutely amazing. I absolutely love it. Absolutely. I, I used to live not too far away. All right, Luke. Well, thank you so much, brother. Thanks so much, Randy. I appreciate it.